Happy Halloween season, everybody. We've all been in quarantine and we need something to enjoy. And Halloween is not canceled this year. It's just going to be celebrated from home. I am someone who wears Halloween clothing from my birthday, which is August 16th, to November 1st. November 1st hits and then I'm on to Christmas clothing. But that's a whole nother video. Today, I wanted to just start in a project that we could all easily take part in together. So it's a little bit of a sew along. I would love for you guys to join me in doing this. And I think that it could be a good project for beginner sewers or experienced people who want a very easy vintage look. What today is going to be is just a classic 1940s gathered skirt. Now I'm going to make it with a Halloween twist, of course, because it's me. A friend of mine on Facebook mentioned having 10 feet of this ribbon. It is little vintage jack-o'-lanterns. So cute. It's just a satin ribbon that's printed on and uh, like die cut in the pumpkin shape. And I thought, well, that would just be adorable along the hem of a skirt and on the edge of a pocket of a skirt. So what I'm going to be making today, and hopefully you'll be joining me in making, is a gathered skirt. Uh, it will have a zipper, two pockets, and a button closure at the waist. Now, I just got a basic black cotton to sew this out of. I went for black because it's going to be my Halloween skirt. Uh, you can obviously choose whatever color you want. There's going to be two big patch pockets to sit right on the front. When I make patch pockets, I always try and make them big enough to hold my phone so I can not have to worry about having it in a purse or if I'm around the house and need it, I can just have it on me. Not many of my vintage skirts have pockets. And I know we all love dresses and skirts with pockets because it's essential. So my materials list is very, very short. I need ribbon. You guys can use whatever embellishment that you want. Fabric. I bought two yards of 60 inch wide black cotton. You're going to need a nine inch zipper and then a button. Matching thread, of course, for your embellishment and your fabric. And then an iron on interfacing that will go in the waistband. The basics for this are you're going to need your waist measurement and your hip measurement and whatever length you like skirts to hit at. I like skirts a little bit on the longer side. I like them to go a few inches below my knee. So you'll need all of those measurements. Right now my waist is at a 30 and my hip is at about a 38. What you're going to do to create your pattern for this is figure out the length you want the skirt, add in seam allowance and hem, and then how you decide the width is you're going to double your hip measurement and it'll all be gathered down to your waist size. It's going to be fairly easy, but here, let me walk you through making the pattern. Okay, I'm here on the floor of the house because I am going to cut out these patterns. Now, I've got to make a note of what former me said. I originally was going to double the hip width and gather that down to the waist size so it was like a nice full gathered skirt. Now, I stupidly bought only two yards of fabric because I'm so used to cutting like A-line and pencil skirts that I didn't think that I was going to need more than two yards of fabric, which is incorrect in a gathered skirt. Um, so I was going to make a pattern based off doubling my hips. I was going to need two 38 inch wide panels. Uh, I only got two yards of fabric, so we know I would have come up four inches short on that, which is like would have been fine because it still would have been gathered. <clears throat> but I'm just going to go with doubling my waist for this one. The fabric is fairly wide, uh, so if I would give myself a little leeway on the hem, I could have actually cut those pieces that way. But I'm just going to double my waist. So I'm going to do two panels that are 30 inches in width, and then I like a length of 28 inches on my skirts. I put on my favorite skirt and judged the length that I wanted based off of that. And that's 28 inches from the waist, like down the center seam is what I measured. I like to put a two inch hem on things. Um, 
but because the fabric's a little more scarce with this one, I'm going to do a like one and a half inch hem. So I'm adding 28 inches in length plus two inches for the hem, uh, which I'll turn under half an inch and then an inch and a half because I like a nice weighty hem on a skirt, especially something gathered to kind of like give it a little more drape. So my piece is going to be 30 inches by 30 inches, but then I need seam allowance on the sides and the top. Um, so I'm gonna cut that pattern piece out and then I'm also going to cut a waistband for 30 inches and the pockets. The pockets I've decided I want fairly large. Based off of this inspiration photo, I want them to be pretty deep and wide. So I'm doing them 10 inches tall by seven inches wide. So I'm gonna add an inch and a half of height onto the pocket for the fold over and then seam allowance all around. I sew with five eighths inch seam allowance because I've grown up sewing store-bought patterns. Uh, most people just do a half inch. I like that on my machine, my uh, plate, that has all the marked lines has a longer line for 5 eighths. So I just add 5 eighths seam allowance to everything. It's easier for me. Um, I'm gonna get to cutting this pattern and I don't know if this is gonna line up correctly for you guys to watch me do this. I also realize I don't have a yardstick. This is going to be a little bit of a challenge in making this skirt. Luckily it's a fairly, oh hi Selena. Luckily it's a fairly simple pattern um, that I think everybody can manage to do this one on their own. Uh, but here's me uh, making the pattern and cutting out the pieces. This first piece we're going to make is the main body of the skirt. It is your waist measurement plus two seam allowances, one for each side, by the length of skirt that you would like plus two inches for the hem and your seam allowance. I use 5 eighths on all of these. That's why all of these diagrams are marked with 5 eighths plus because I, as I mentioned, sew with a 5 eighths. Now here I'm adding the marks for where the pockets will go. I put mine four inches down from the waist uh, plus the seam allowance and then you need to measure down 10 inches for the length of the pocket and as marked in this diagram, over seven and a half plus one seam allowance. This will make it so you add the pockets into the side seams. And this is the pocket pattern. It is one and a half inches for the fold over plus 10 inches plus five eighths seam allowance. And then by five eighths seam allowance, seven and a half inches, and then again, five eighths seam allowance. Now the waistband is fairly simple. I do all waistbands the waist size I want plus one inch for the overlap of a button and then the seam allowance again on both sides, the five eighths of an inch. Very self-explanatory for the most part if you've sewn a waistband before, but if not, I can put these diagrams up online on my Pinterest like Closet Historian does, so you can refer back to them. Here I'm just cutting out the paper patterns, all of my seam allowances included. I did not get the exact length I initially wanted on the skirt piece, so I'm piecing together um, more paper just to get it exactly the length that I want. Uh, I talked about how I didn't have enough fabric to cut this with my hip measurement doubled, and I must have just been having a very bad day of mathematics um, I don't know what was going through my head. I thought about this for days, how I didn't have enough fabric, and I explained why to my partner. I'm realizing now I had more than enough fabric to do this with my hip doubled. I am cutting this pattern out, running um, down, like with my pattern pieces running in like the opposite direction you'd kind of usually put them, but it's because I wanted to have the selvage edge uh, on my gathered edge. Sometimes when I'm gathering fabric, the fabric will want to fray while you're like pulling the stitches tighter. Uh, so I thought it would be easier since my fabric had no pattern to just cut the selvage edge to be the one with the gathered edge. I used pinking shears to cut all of this out so I wouldn't have to worry about edges or like 
finishing them on the inside, really. Uh, these are my grandmother's pinking shears. I love using them. And you don't have to do it. Here I'm cutting out the waistband. I don't have a video of it, but I do also cut out an interfacing for the waistband. Uh, I just do the two inches uh, that will be kind of visible waistband by the waist size plus one inch. I don't include seam allowance. Pretty much you're making the same shape without seam allowance. And I cut out the pockets here. After I cut out all of these pieces, I am going to, well, I fold up all my extra fabric that I have because I had enough fabric. I'm a crazy person, but I'm going to make a mask to match. So I'll have a little fun. Now I bring it over to my table on another day, obviously, because I've changed outfits. And I'm going to mark uh, where the pockets go. I just place a pin through to the back, mark it, and then I go in with my chalk and connect all the lines. Here I'm starting to sew the pockets. I've marked the one and a half inch that's going to be folded over onto the inside here. So I'm folding that one and a half inches to the back and ironing that flat, which will get rid of the chalk, which is not chalk, it is crayon pretty much. Um, and then once that's set in, I fold it under again, just half an inch, and that will be on the inside of the pocket so it'll be nice and finished. Now when I take that over to the machine, obviously I'm doing two of these, I'm just showing you one, I stitch down the uh, half inch turned under first and then, which is coming, this is my first time doing a voiceover with a video and I am having trouble obviously with my timing. Um, so here I am incorrectly starting to turn the edge and go to pin it. And then I realized I did not stitch. Uh, but I am going to take that over to the machine in a second and re... Yep, there's the realization. I was like, nope, I've got to stitch this. So now over to the sewing machine. I have not figured out the angle for this just yet, but I'm working on it. Oh, this is one of the things I thought I recorded and didn't. So there is the stitch that is uh, holding down the turn over edge on the inside of the pocket. Then I take it on the and flip the um, interior like facing piece of the pocket as I was showing in the last video and stitch it and clip the corners. Uh, gosh, I did a terrible job of this on video. It, as you can see, I'm flipping it to the outside. So now I have a nice clean edge and I ran a uh, seam allowance all the way around. So I, ha I know where I'm like wanting to turn the edges of these pockets. Here I'm pressing them down. I'm only doing two of the four sides. One edge, which is the top, already has a finished edge because you folded over the pocket twice. And then one side edge is going to be into the side seam of the skirt. So you only need to have two finished edges of each pocket, but make sure you do them mirrored uh, because obviously they are on opposite sides of the skirt. So they will be put into opposite sides of the seams. I'm doing a terrible job explaining this. I'm truly sorry. If you've ever sewn a pocket from, like a patch pocket from a store-bought pattern, this is exactly the way that they have you do it. Uh, you flip the turned over edge onto the front and then do your seam allowance all the way around so you have a guide for what you're turning under and you get a nice clean corner on those top two uh, of the pocket that will be open. Again, I think I just explained that terribly. I am having trouble with how to explain exactly what I did there. And I'm realizing this video doesn't show it great. I'll find a ref I'll find a better reference if you guys need help figuring this out. I had trouble figuring out my angles for videoing, obviously, because these don't partic like I keep covering the camera with my large arms. So I've already gotten one pocket sewn on here. And like I said, one side just has a raw edge and that's the side that is attached to, that will be attached to the other side of the skirt. 
uh, here is the markings that I did earlier. Uh, and I'm just going to fit this pattern piece onto them. So this way my pockets line up correctly. I'm trying to move this camera. There we go. Uh, so I'm just gonna pin this on, line up the corners, and get that pinned so I can sew it on. Now this part, originally I was going to just sew three sides of the pocket onto the front piece of the skirt and then I realized what might help these pockets stand out more like in the original inspiration photo is to have them sewn into the seams so they maybe kind of stick out a little bit more with uh, the gathered waist being pulled in and I this do, this does end up working I really like how the pockets ki came out on this I decided to have my pockets be four inches plus seam allowance down. So it would be four inches from the waist because that's where the curve, uh, like about from my waist to the cur end of the curve of my hip um, is about four inches. Not to the fullest point, but just where kind of that hourglassy shape goes. It was only about four inches. I imagine most people would have between three and five, depending on the length of their torso. I Four worked out really well for me and made these pockets stand out in a good way. So here I'm just stitching on the pocket. Very easy, simple straight stitch. I tried to stitch as close to the edge of the pocket as possible, uh, taking out my pins as I go along, which I don't always do. You'll see later in the video. Uh, but I try and do it as often as I can. After I stitch on the pockets, obviously I clip my threads. Make sure to do that while you, I used to try and do it at the end and it doesn't work. Just do it while you're working. So here I'm putting the a front piece and the back piece together, selvage edge at the top because that's what I want gathered. And I make sure to sandwich that pocket edge in there nice and flat so it will line up right. Uh, the bottom of my skirt length was a little off on these, and I fixed that later. So this I'm stitching one side. Uh, so that will have the pocket included, but I won't stitch up the other side just yet. What I do after I stitch up one edge is I go and I put on all of my embellishments. So there's no breaks or seams in them, uh, just on one edge. I'm pressing down my seams in between, of course, because you want it to look nice and flat. And my edges are already pinked, so it's not a big deal uh, that I'm not like turning them under or finishing them in any particularly nice way. But there is the pocket on one edge, perfectly sewn in. So now that that's set, I have one large panel that I'm going to add my ribbon to. Now I marked where I wanted it from side to side and pinned it into place and hand sewed it all on. Now for the other side, it's going to have the zipper. I have a nine inch zipper here. I'm just holding it up to the side so you can see it and marking a little bit under the metal piece with a pin and then taking out these other two pins and then that notes where I'm sewing the side edge together, making sure to grab the pocket in there and stitch it all up just the way it should be. I was originally gonna do a different type of zipper. So I had some plans that got changed a little bit, but I'm just sewing from that pin down to the bottom edge. Here I am stitching up that side. Again, I'm back stitching and then running down at my 5 eighths seam allowance, taking out the pins as I go. The next step is put, I'm going to be pressing all of this seam open again. I always press my seams. I think it looks nice. It always makes things look nice and crisp. Uh, so I go and I pin the edges together that weren't sewn yet because that's where the zipper is gonna go. I stitch a zipper seam in with a basting stitch pretty much just a, a longer stitch so it's easier to take out. So here I am stitching that is again at 5 eighths. 
I'm not back stitching here because those are coming out. I take it back over to iron it. I was having, I have terrible, I have a terrible job of moving this camera back and forth. But I ironed that flat and I'm pinning my zipper on here. Now I have to change to my zipper foot, which I've done. Luckily, my friend Kylie sent me a zipper foot that works on this machine. I am very lucky. So here I am stitching on my zipper. Now, okay, I'm terrible at stitching zippers. I am just, I've been sewing for 20 years. Also, I just got a zipper foot for the first time in 10. Um, so I'm still getting kind of used to it. So don't hold how terrible of a job I'm doing against me. Um, there are so many resources that you can learn to sew zippers from. I, as of right now, I'm not one. Okay, I have to say, what the fuck, I did a terrible, terrible job on this zipper. I'm still getting used to having a zipper foot. I have been terrible at zippers for 20 years. This is not a good zipper. Um, I still don't particularly know how to do it right. I've watched videos. I have tried and tried and tried to figure this out. One of these days I'll actually get it. I was planning on doing a placketed zipper for this and then I realized that doesn't work because it would have been cutting into the pocket even more for the zipper and I didn't want that because I want the pockets to kind of stick out. I did a terrible job, I feel regret, but also I'm not here to teach you how to put in a zipper, I'm just telling you how I make this skirt and sadly I did a terrible job making the zipper part of this skirt. And there are other YouTube resources for installing one. For a second I was like, do I just not mention it? And I was like, there's no way to not mention it. It is that noticeably bad. Um, usually I'd use a seam ripper for this, but for some reason, when I brought all of my sewing stuff over here, I did not bring a seam ripper. Um, really ambitious of me to think I wasn't gonna have to seam rip a single thing for an entire month and a half. Um, that was wrong. I've just had to continue to cut things open instead of seam rip them. Um, yeah, so I did not do a great job on the zipper. Also, this is like a skirt that will maybe get worn twice a year, so I'm not super worried about it. Um, but you know, maybe someday I'll fix it. I doubt it. Next, you're going to do two lines of stitching on your white, your longest stitch to do your gathered edge. Um, I always do the side that's facing out on top and then you are going to want to pull the bottom two bobbin threads to gather all of this. You can do this with a single running stitch but sometimes it breaks and it messes things up so if you run two it's a little bit better. So I've been gathering my skirt and pretty much all I need to do now is make sure it's the right size. So I'm measuring that the front panel is 15 inches for, uh, you know, a 30 inch waist. And now I take the waistband, which I've applied the interfacing to, and I sew both edges of it and flip them inside. Now, after I stitch these, I am going to trim the corner and take the seam allowance down with my pinking shears before I take them over to the iron to turn them and press them. Waistbands, I sometimes struggle with. This is the easiest way I've found to do it. There's little things that you can help turn the corners with. I use scissors here. Maybe don't do that. Maybe use a knitting needle or something else. I'm trying to use a pin here. Just get one of the little pointy things from the Notion section of Joanne. It helps. So now I'm going to pin the skirt into the waistband. I've made sure it was the correct size and then knotted off my double running bobbin threads together. Uh, so it doesn't move too much. As I pin it to the waistband, I'm going to kind of spread out the gathers to make sure they're even as I do this. What I did here was I pinned it all along the inside edge. The waistband is on the outside being pinned to the edge because it is going to be stitched and flipped and pressed. So after I've fin pinned the front, I jump to the farthest edge of the waistband. So I make sure all of the gathers line up nicely and I work my way back in towards the side seam. I run this through the machine at a five ace and as 
you haven't seen it yet, but you're going to, I make some mistakes while stitching this. I don't do a great job at making sure that my skirt is pulled taut and my uh, ruffles, gathers, are moving straight. When I get onto the front, I end up catching some of the skirt that shouldn't end up in the waistband, which is something that happens when you're not like super paying attention. So I ripped it out and I regathered all of my edge and I pressed it with the iron. And I feel like that always helps me a little bit when I'm doing a gathered stitch into a waistband. So I went back to the machine and redid the half that was a nightmare mess. And it actually came out a lot better. I highly suggest ironing your gathers before you stitch them. It helps flatten them and kind of keep them in place when you're sewing. So now I'm going to take out all the pins and flip the waistband up. From the inside, I'm pressing the seam allowance up into the waistband so that it will all be like hidden and encased by the waistband on the inside. I'm turning under the 5 eighths of an inch and pressing that down. So now there's no raw edges along the waist. It's all going to be completely hidden inside of the waistband, which makes for a nice sturdy skirt that won't fray or have any... Um, have your like threads get caught and ripped and fall apart. So I folded that under my seam allowance and I am pressing it. Now here I'm working on the hem. First I'm going around and I'm turning it under one half of an inch and ironing it. I start with the two side seams when I do this and then I kind of, on a flat edge, I kind of pick it up and fold over everything all around. Uh, if it's a nice straight seam, it should do that fairly easily. And then I move on to my second turn. The second turn I'm a little pickier with it is one inch and a half, uh, which is why we had a two inch hem included in our pattern. So now I'm going around measuring an inch and a half, ironing and pinning it, just so it's a nice even hem all the way around. Again, this is turned an inch and a half, but there's also the half inch turn. So like I said, there's no raw edges and any raw edges like on the side seams are pinked. So you'll have a nice clean inside of a skirt that's not gonna fray. I always say press things as you go. If you have plastic headed pins, make sure to not iron over them because they will melt, but they make glass headed ones like for that reason pretty much. So once I've gotten all this measured out, I'm going to take it on over to the sewing machine and stitch along this. Now oftentimes I'll do this by hand. Depending on the skirt style, if it's something uh, that's like not cotton or like very day wear, I'll hand sew my hems. I like how it looks not having a visible hem on the outside, but I think for this project it's a daytime Halloween skirt. I didn't need to hand stitch this uh, hem by any means. Like it's going to look just as nice with a visible machine stitch. Now the next thing I'm going to do is top stitch the waistband. I should have done this before. I was originally going to do it by hand. But what I'm doing is on the front side, I am stitching through the waistband, through the seams on the inside to the back of the waistband to hold everything nice and together and look uh, good without having to hand stitch uh, from the inside like I would normally do. So I have now top stitched the waistband. I didn't do a great job. I actually don't usually top stitch. I usually sew by hand on the inside, but you know, I caught it on the inside, all of the exposed seam is in there. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a buttonhole right here. You don't have to do that. You can do a skirt bar, like the large hook and eye is meant for skirts instead. Um, I just have a buttonholer and buttons, 
and that's how I'm going to finish this and have it close. I prefer buttons because they uh, are more authentic um, in my opinion. But this skirt is almost done. All I have to do now is make the buttonhole and sew on the button. Now with that, our, my skirt is finished. You can see me wearing it right here. Okay, a quick message from Editor Main. I am working on this video. Obviously, throughout this I got a little rushed for time. You can tell. Uh, I am editing this right now and I'm realizing I needed to kind of wrap it up a little better. So, excuse me uh, past Mame. I wanted to say this skirt went well. The video, not as well. Uh, this is my first one. I haven't really learned exactly how to place my camera for filming all of this stuff. And then there was parts that I accidentally didn't film, like I thought it was filming and then it wasn't. So there's going to be a few kind of like gaps that are just voiceovers as you've seen. But I'm going to fix this in the future, of course, uh, with later videos, I'm going to figure out how to set up my camera to do this better. Uh, I'm happy with this skirt. I think that this video can teach you how to make this skirt. Uh, I think that if I could change anything, the number one thing I would change was I would double my hip measurement instead of my waist. I like the cut of the skirt, but I think it just could be more gathered. Uh, so I suggest you go with your hip, uh, but you can do your waist. Like this skirt, I will for sure be wearing. Uh, in that video of me wearing it, it is 100% pinned at the waist I did my button holder would not work I started filming the button holder and it just didn't do it right so I just wanted to get this out on time so I didn't put a button on it or a buttonhole I don't know if I'm gonna play around with my buttonhole attachment a little bit more or if I'm just going to probably do one by hand I'm not sure but there's no buttonhole in that video. Or, yeah, there's no button or buttonhole in that video. Uh, I think that, like, pocket placement and everything, like, the look of the skirt went right. Oh, also for transparency's sake, my trim had to all be hand-sewn on because I would stitch through the design if I did it with the machine. Uh, and the bottom of the ribbon is not sewn on, only, like, the top. So I have to go back and finish that. Because this is a skirt I'm going to wear. I really like it. Uh, but I suggest you double your hip instead of your waist, which I talked about in the beginning. I just didn't buy enough fabric because I'm a fool. Um, but thank you so much for watching this video. If you made it this far, I really hope that you make this skirt. Happy Halloween, guys. Uh, I have another big project coming. I've started the video for it. Let's hope the rest of the supplies I'm waiting on come soon. If you have any questions about this, please, please, please leave them in the comments because I can always make a follow-up video. Uh, there's also going to be a video coming to my Patreon this month of how to take this pattern and extend it to be a button down the front. Um, it's only a little bit of an alteration, but I'll have a whole video where you take the pattern that we made in this and make it uh, so you can button it on the front instead of putting a side zipper, which is, I think, the like one thing I would stylistically like um, more. I like skirts that button down the front. I think it's very cute. Also, you eliminate having to do a zipper, but you have to do buttonholes. It's, yeah, a preference thing. And in that video, I'll go into how you can make it a little more ornamental and fun. We'll talk about that on my Patreon. Make sure to follow the link below to that. 
so I'm gonna hand it back to past Mame to finish this wrap up. Thank you guys so much for watching. This one was a mess, but there will be better maker videos coming soon. So now that my skirt's done, I would love for you guys to make one and show me how it goes. Tag me on Instagram or Twitter with yours that you've made. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you all soon. Remember, Halloween isn't canceled this year. It's just from home. Wear a mask and be safe.